Hi guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to set up an inexpensive monitoring station using a tablet for a home surveillance system. Now, you've probably seen surveillance stations on movies or on television shows. Typically, these will be a desk or a station where there will be multiple displays, and each display will then have multiple camera feeds on each display. These are monitoring buildings or plants where they might have dozens and dozens of cameras. Now, a home surveillance system isn't gonna have that many cameras, but you can still set up something like that on a single display on something like a tablet. I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can do this. The first one is just going to be using a tablet like this. And this is a Kindle HD 10 inch tablet. And I got it for off of Amazon for less than hundred bucks. And then I bought this case for it. And the case was, I think about 10 bucks. So between the case and the tablet, I have about $90 in it. Now you may have an old tablet laying around and if it's not too old, it might work just fine. But if you have something that's more than maybe three or four years old, I don't know that that would work because it's not going to be powerful enough to handle a lot of video feeds at the same time. So even if you don't have a tablet, you can still get one for fairly inexpensive. I would recommend getting something that's at least 10 inches and the Kindle Fire HD meets all the criterion for that, but you can spend a little bit more than what I did on this tablet, but I just know that this one works fine because it's the one I've been using. Figure out where you're gonna put the device. Now, you'll wanna put the device in a place that you're going to be spending a lot of time or a place that you can at least check in on every now and then. And for me, that would be the kitchen because of course I'm gonna be in the kitchen cooking dinner or I might go through the kitchen when I'm going outside or I might go there to uh, get dinner ready and then eat or whatever it might be. So so what I decided to do is actually have a device that I could use on the counter or I could put it on the refrigerator. So that's part of the reason I got this case because this particular case has a kickstand on it. So I can you know, pop the kickstand out and then I can use the kickstand to prop this guy up and then I can put it on the counter and watch it that way. And it can also close the app and use it to look up things like recipes or other things like I might be interested in, uh, like the weather or whatever it might be. But in any case, I can uh, close the kickstand and I can also put this on the refrigerator because I put some neodyne magnets on this and neodyne magnets are very powerful magnets so that you can put it right on the side of the refrigerator and it will stay there. And then you can pull up the uh, agent DVR software and just watch it and keep it on while you're cooking dinner or wherever, if you're passing through and even better, if you put it on the refrigerator, you can put it, I typically put it on the side of my refrigerator. And then I have the power out port on this thing right here and I can plug it into the wall so that I don't have to worry about the battery going dead. And so I can just turn it on, plug it in and it just stays there. And then whenever I want to use it, for some other reason other than watching uh, my cameras, I can pull it off and then use it for, the, like I said, recipes or the weather. So you can skip this next part if you have something other than a Fire HD. Basically, I just wanna show you how to install the Play Store so you can download a particular app. You can skip ahead to that part if you already have Play Store on your device. So on your Fire HD, go to your settings and scroll down to device options. Once this comes up, you will wanna to go to device options and under that uh, menu, then you want to go down to about Fire Tablet and tap on that. Now under the Fire Tablet, there is the serial number. You just tap on that a bunch of that times. I've already enabled developer settings, but what this will do is enable another menu. Uh, so go back a screen and then you'll have developer options. Now you wanna tick this on and click okay, and then scroll down to debugging and then switch on USB debugging and go ahead and plug the cable into the device via USB debugging. And from here, so from here, you'll want to get on your PC and plug in the USB cable and download Fire Toolbox. I'll link it in the video description below. What this is going to do is launch some utilities that you can use to install Google services and the Play Store on your device. So click on Google services and then you click execute tool. And what this is going to do is launch an automated process for installing all of those utilities on your uh, Fire HD. Now, this process can take a little while to complete. I've uh, accelerated the video just a little bit because it does take a few minutes to uh, download and get everything up and running. But once it's done, uh, you'll get a uh, screen that will ask you to reboot the device. And basically you say yes and reboot the device. And then that will disconnect the device from your computer. But then you'll wanna go back onto your device to actually log on to Google services. So from here, just go to uh, Play Store and then open up Play Store. And, and everything else is pretty much like a standard Google experience from here. You just uh, click on sign on or tap on sign in. It's gonna get your device information. And then from here, um, basically you just log in and uh, punch in your email and your password, and then it's gonna log you in. And then uh, it's gonna get some account information for you. And then from there, you can, um, you know, you don't have to back it up to Google Drive, but you're just gonna search for an app called Full Screen Browser and install that application. Full Screen Browser will basically allow us to 
uh, run a browser in full screen, which will then allow us to connect to our DVR software and it will run in full screen mode without any of the toolbars on Android. And then this, uh, this little app is pretty straightforward. It gives you the ability to set a, a basically a home screen. And so anytime you launch the app, it'll launch right into your DVR. And that's what I typically will use for this. And one, as long as you keep the app up, it won't go to sleep. If it's plugged in, it'll just basically stay up. And then you can use this particular app to uh, watch your video camera, uh, video feeds rather coming in from your DVR. Right here, I'm typing in the address to my DVR. And um, if you hit that little menu uh, on the right, the three uh, dots, you can set it as the home page. And then you tap the full screen in the top right, and then you're up and running uh, with this particular app. And you can see my preview right here, and it's up and running. So this is what it looks like once it's on the refrigerator. I have the magnets holding it onto the refrigerator. Now I have my monitoring station right on the side of my refrigerator where I can actually control everything and see what's going on with this. So there's another way that you can do this, and it's pretty straightforward, and that's just to use a television with a Chromecast. Now you can buy fairly inexpensive televisions. You can get one for less than $100. That's about 32 inches, and a Chromecast is less than $20 typically. And you put those two together, then you can have just a way of watching the video feeds on a television. Now, this is nice if you just want to watch it, but it doesn't allow you to control it. Now, the way that you would do this is simply just to use Chrome and then cast it over to the TV. So I'll just walk you through this process, but it's pretty straightforward and really easy to do. And you may even have a TV already that you're not really using, so this might be a good use for that television. This is actually really easy to do. I remote it into my DVR. Now you could use your DVR if it's in a more convenient place and it's highly visible and you could use it for observing things. Uh, mine's not, so I'm gonna cast it to a television. And typically a television is going to be in a place that you can observe and watch uh, fairly easily. And I have a, a television in my office, so I'm just going to uh, cast over to that and uh, put the DVR up on my television and now I can see what's going on on my television and not have to have a one use of my work monitors to actually see what's happening. Now you could use this to cast it to your living room television or maybe your bedroom television or something else like that. So again, just use whatever casting solution you have. If you have AirPlay from Apple, I'm using a Chromecast with a Google Chrome. So I installed Chrome on the DVR and I just simply cast it over to my television. And that gives you the ability to at least see what's going on. Now, if you need to make an adjustment, you can remote into the DVR and make adjustments or pull it up in a browser on your workstation or your phone or your tablet and then make adjustments like just playing with the cameras. If you want to um, get a preview of what's going on with one of the cameras or uh, if you want to look at the recordings or review those kinds of things, certainly you can use that on a device. But just for watching things happen as they happen, just throw it up onto a TV and you'll be good to go. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.